The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship this morning. It's good to be with you all. A couple of announcements as we begin. One, you may have noticed we have a guest today. This is Pastor Bob Berger from Food for the Poor. Uh, he is here as a guest today to tell us about the ministry that Food for the Poor has been doing. And I know that our church has worked with Food for the Poor in the past, uh, before I was here. Uh, I'll have him introduce himself in just a minute, but just go through a couple of our announcements and things going on here at the church. Please see the bulletin board over there. We have a number of events happening pretty quickly. Uh, soup sale is this week. I think Thursday is the uh, go day. So good luck to everybody who's involved with that. I know it's quite the production. Uh, Young at Heart will be meeting on September 25th. I will be leading a little, uh, little piece there. So please come join us for that if you're able to. It should be a good time. And we are having uh, Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. So what's not to love? And then Harvest Home Sunday is September 29th. And that's always an amazing time. The church will be decorated. It will look wonderful. Uh, and then we'll be celebrating and building offering for that. But this is one of the quick changes for this year. This year we're doing our trunk or treat really early. It is going to be on October 5th. Please join us if you're able to. Uh, if you want to decorate a trunk or just help out or just come, please come celebrate uh, the Halloween season as we just have fun together as a church. It's going to be a good time. We had a great time last year, and I'm looking forward to it this year. Those are all the little notes that I had. One sad note before we begin today. I, uh, on Friday, a longtime member of our congregation who's not been able to be here because of health reasons, Marvin Stetler, passed away. Uh, I don't know any plans for the funeral. I know they want it to be a quiet graveside with just the family. But if you could give your condolences to Betty Flight and to their family and just care for them as we do a, as a church because it's a it's very hard transition to lose, to lose a loved one, even if they're more senior, we still love all our people. So keep the Stetler, Stetler, Marvin Settler and the flights in your prayer as, uh, over this next week. That's everything that I have. Bob? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. 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 Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins, or the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, who is suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that, for the sake of the gospel, we may turn to the Lord of the take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he awakens, awakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the grave. 
A reading from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. But if we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So, also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. Mm. How great is a forest, how great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord uh, and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea and Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Peace be still. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, it is in you that we live, we move, and we have our being always. We thank you for the privilege of life and love, the ability to have life and to live it in love, and to know that you are the God of love, and that that permeates all that we are. I pray that our hearts and our minds and our voices will be united tonight, today, so that we can share the good news of what you have in store for us here and now and always. Amen. Again, let me thank you for getting me out of Florida at this time of year. What you have here right 
posting the page or writing to Paul Tillich. Um, Safety right, he said, this moment when Paul, when Paul really looks to me, not what Peter, Simon Peter, Simon looks in the eyes of Jesus and says, you are the Christ. It's the first time in history when a human being looks in another human being's eyes and says, you're God. And that's pretty powerful. Back it up a bit. You know, it starts out by Jesus. It's kind of looking at the 12 there, and he says, well, you've been knocking around with me for about three years here. We've been talking, seeing what's going on. You've watched everything. You're in the crowd when I'm up front. Who do people say that I am? And they come out with this who's who laundry list of all the great prophets. Some say you're Elijah. Some say Elisha, Moses, um, John the Baptist, who they knew was already decapitated by this point. But they were saying this. What are they saying? The understanding was this. Before that triumphant event of the Messiah breaking into the world, God was going to pull out of the graves all the most eloquent speakers and convincing people and let them go in the whole community to prepare the way of the Messiah coming. So in an instant, in, in, in really what they're saying at this point is, we're all looking over your shoulder for who's coming next. All right? Then the moment. Caesarea Philippi, some place, who knows? He says, okay. But who do you say that I am? Enter that moment in history. Can you feel it? Probably such a silence. What's going to be said now? Simon probably said, you, you are the Christ. I think he said it haltingly. Not like, you are the Christ. Nah, nah. Are we seeing this? You are the Christ? The one who's waited for? You are God here and now? I'm looking in your eyes? And then Jesus affirms it. Blessed are you. Simon Bar-Jonah, son of Jonah, this is a reality that only God could have helped you see. Whoa. Whoa. And then Jesus, having that assurance, says, okay, let me tell you how this is going to work out. Remember all over the time when he would be taking, caring for somebody or healing them, he'd say, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. He didn't want to impose. He didn't want to impose. He wanted people to see it. You know, the, the remarkable thing is that God loves, so loves the crown of the creation, you and me, human beings, that he allows each and every one of us to walk up and down in front of him at generation after generation, person after, is he or is he not? A God who allows us that freedom that vision, that's pretty powerful. But that's what's going on. But now Jesus wants to tell the 12, here is what's going to happen. And he goes through that litany. We're going to go to Jerusalem. We're crucified. I'll rise again. And they're all scared to death. They understand everything except rise again. And about that point, you remember, here comes Simon. Well, I, I know what's going on now. No, Jesus, we got a better idea. Uh, why don't we stay here in the Galilee? We'll set up a nice little clinic. We can have a food stand, a little gift shop. Let's stay right here. We're safe here. They love us here. Let's not go there. And Jesus is saying, I've got to go there. And I've got to see people see the power that can be forced down will not subdue the love of God which seems so weak and comes up. If you want to win your life by this you're going to lose it but if you lose it by taking up the cross and following me ah 
the paradox. You get it all. Because God is love. And when you tie in to the love, that's tying into the eternity. The power of seeing the strength of love in the midst of a world that oppresses. And you know, really food for the poor. We're a group of people. And I thank you for being a part of that. We're a group of people who believe in God and then, you know, take the next step. You know, we say we believe in Jesus, but you know there's a really almost a more important statement? When we believe that Jesus believes in us. You're my body. You're my presence. You're going to do marvelous things as you take up your cross in a sharing, sacrificing way to make the world what it should be. Thy kingdom come on earth. You know, heaven is going to take care of itself. You know, as it is in heaven. Food for the poor tries to imitate the prodigal son. We're Matthew 25 kind of Christians. We believe that God helps us to help and that we're to support the neighbor. You know, when Jesus asked the son of the law and the prophets, love the Lord your God with your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as what? You know it, yourself. And then the neighbor is the self, is the one in need, and also there's transforming. The one who cares is called the neighbor, and the one who's cared for is called the neighbor. Ah, life. The circle complete. God for us and us for them. Food for the Poor works with the 17 countries around the Caribbean. Also, we do things here in the United States, and we've also been in Ukraine. When they were coming out, we had all these meal packets, but predominantly, predominantly, we try to help those people around the, the, the Caribbean area. Take a crayon, mark all of the things around the Caribbean islands in the Gulf of Mexico, and you've got it. And we try to go there and try to help people be nourished where they are. When you build a home, you build it in Haiti. So did my wife and I. I'm going to probably talk a little bit more about Honduras right now. Haiti is work fu continuing to function, but it's difficult, as you probably read everywhere. But I want to tell you this. We have 400 people who are employed by Food for the Poor who are on the ground working in Haiti. They're indigenous. We've had three of them that were captured by the gangs and then we're going to hold them for ransom for a million dollars. We don't have a million dollars not to do this way. And folks came around and said, you know, these folks are for us. And so we didn't pay a million dollars. We got them back. And we're feeding over 50 some thousand people every single day in Jesus' name in, in Haiti and much more in other places. But where I was last was Honduras, and I guess I want to share with you some things that are there because I'm so impressed with what can happen. Honduras. And we have gone to understanding that we really want to try to eradicate poverty, as tough as that may seem. And I know that you all purchased a house for $3,800 as I did. Now houses are more like $9,800 for several reasons. The pandemic shot everything up. However, this is what's going on also. We found that we're really wanting to build lives more than things even. And so we're building communities. So homes are built in a place where there is infrastructure. You've got utilities. You've got the sanitation. You've got the schools, the churches, usually two, one Roman Catholic, the other Protestant. You've got uh, civic centers. Put it all together and, and uh, potable water. Make sure the water is. Put these communities together. And also then we've sent people in who can identify and just figure out who are the leaders and support the leaders so that they become the mayors and they become the teachers and they become, and so the community can have more of this. And also an economic base. So in the one where I was, we had made a deal with Fruit of the Loom. 
Uh, so, hey, you know, you might be sitting on one of our things. And the other part was welding. Welding. There were people who know, knew how to do that. And worked. Another thing that happens close by is we invested in a thing that's called the, uh, the dry canal. All right, those have gone through Panama Canal. I'm not one of them. But they tell me that if you look in the Atlantic side, as far as you can see, or the Pacific side, as far as you can see, you see ships all waiting their turn to try to get through this narrow canal. Well, Honduras, and we were working with them, they decided to build a very good road, a highway. You know, good road. You know, Pennsylvania Turnpike put things together around here one time, didn't it? Okay. In a similar vein, this road. Now, how do people learn to drive in that part of the world? They basically sit beside their parent, grandfather or something, get all their good and bad habits and do this and do the right things. Okay, now we're going to put trucks on this road. Oh, wait a second. You know, grandma and grandpa didn't do exactly that kind of thing. So we established at that point a driving school. It's a good driving school. I've been there. They got the simulators. You got this. You got people in this thing. And it, you see these people, they are really bent and on really understanding this. The governments will then sponsor for the tuition, whatever it is, I really don't know. And they then bring their people in to go to school so that they can drive back and forth. We take that money, we, we are youth, food for the poor, and we put it into people who cannot possibly be able to pay to go into the school. And so they come. Now there's about 800 students at this point, about 780 or something, in that ballpark. Go online, uh, you'll, you'll see it. Um, and what, about six months to eight months learning to drive these cars, and the big thing is to be able to learn how to drive the tankers. That fluid flows here, there, can move around, gotta be able to do that. We're really skilled with those people. That's what we want to do. In that area of the country, $10,000 is a good salary. Not minimum wage, good salary. When somebody comes out of the trucking school, they're making 14. In that one village there was song, coming to a personal level, there was a woman that was just exquisite to me. Her name was Estrid. I don't say her name exactly right, but anyway. But she's about this tall. She's She's had a lot of plastic surgery, a lot of plastic surgery. Her story is, she was with her family. Her dad was drank too much. Her mother was trying to take care of her. And inadvertently, this hot milk was spilled over her when she was three years old, and it disfigured her terribly. And with that, the mother felt so responsible. She was out on the road trying to find money to see if she could get some plastic surgery for her daughter, and she was killed on the road by a car. Her father just did not know really how to go on, and he just left, leaving the children there. She has two brothers and, two, and a sister. And the older sister went to prostitution. That's what she could do. But the others, they were just stumbling around. And then we have the thing called Angels of Hope. And in any bulletin that I sent to you, gave to you, or you got in there, and I don't know where it is, but it's over there somewhere, you got one. And it'll say like $34 a month you can sponsor a child as in an Angels of Hope. I have one, it's called Kissinger. It's kind of nice to know his picture. I got it on my refrigerator. <clears throat> He's doing okay. Well, Astrid was one of those also. And in this, then, they saw the need and we were able to get her up to Florida, <clears throat> get her a lot of plastic surgery, and it's come a long, long way. But in doing all of this, found out the young woman has exquisite art skills. Who knew? Well, they encouraged her. She won a scholarship for this. And now, in her home, where she's now 24, 25 years old, her husband, who's a truck driver from our school, and her children are there. But we built another room on that for her artistic, and she is becoming a predominant artist. I'm going to send a video to you, Pastor Spencer, about the, her. And you can see, 
She has the ability to trans put this up. And here is a person, think about this. If you and me and people just like us who care hadn't cared, she's dead in the street. Let's just call it where it is. But hey, what is put in her hands? What's able to be done? And she's raising her children. See, that's what it is to take up our cross and follow. To care about the disadvantaged, the one who is vulnerable. You can tell the quality of a society, of a church, of any, how they treat the people on the margins. Not the powerful in the middle, but who, and the old and firmed and, and the young and the vulnerable. That's the quality. And that's the quality God says, I created the world with. And you are part of the creative process then. That's who we are. That's who we can be because of the loving presence of God who says, I believe in you. A God who says, I believe in you. Food for the poor, I'm with us because, well, I, my Lutheran roots go back. Not quite, well, yeah, okay, 1625. Some of my relatives are getting off that boat, Muhlenbergs, okay? All right, that's there, but think about this. As much as the Reformation is important as it is, in John, the 17th chapter, Jesus' high priestly prayer, he prays that they may be one so that the world will know that you are and I are one. So it is the unity of the church in caring compassion that I think we can do. And I want to say to you, food for the poor is Episcopalians, Roman Catholics, Lutherans, both branches. You thought the age of miracles was over, didn't you? Methodists, United Church of Christ, uh, we're working with the evangelical, the, the, that crowd, we're just starting there. And we're trying to pull it all together to care about the other as much as we care about ourselves. And I thank you for the history of this particular community. When you were reconstructing and doing this, I heard this in Sunday school class, thank you. Bron said this, that you all made a decision that you would build a home in it, it's in Haiti. That's the kind of cross-bearing love that makes God's work for 261 years of ultimate importance for you and continuing to go on from this day forward. Now, I'm kind of a shy guy, you can tell. I'll be at the back. If you're so inclined to share a gift for food for the poor when the, on the way out, great. Otherwise. Maybe you ought to go and look in um, online or look, maybe you would like to be a part of Angels of Hope on a continuing kind of basis. It's fun. I, every time I go to the refrigerator, I see Kessinger right there. <laughs> and I remember. You know, and we are also, I want to tell you, we're transparent and we're effective and efficient. We can, all of our administration, all of our fundraising, it's just about a margin mid above 10 cents on the dollar. That's it. So 90% gets there and does what you want to do. That's why I really work with this group. That's why I invite you to be a part of it. That's why I know we can make tremendous gifts together. I'm going to ask you one last thing, the hardest thing I'm going to ask you, and this is close your eyes and not fall asleep, all right? I want you to use your Christian imagination. You don't have to go far. You're out on the hillside, maybe something like this lovely hillside right outside of the doors of this church. But as far as you can see, there are people sitting with blankets and they're eating picnic style. And you can tell immediately by their attire, they are not a wealthy group of people at all. But there's a happy murmur. And every so often, someone just turns and looks at you and just kind of nods, and you feel welcomed and warmed by that. In the center of this crowd, there was someone who was sitting with a robe and a hood over top of his head. And your eyes focus in, and you watch that figure come slowly and majestically to full height. You see him push the hood back from his face, and you notice his hand, and there's a nail mark. 
and his eyes meet your eyes. He looks into your eyes, into your heart, into your soul. You know who it is. And he looks at you and he says, come, come. He says your name, Spencer, Mark, Bob, Randy, Kathy, says your name. Come to the kingdom prepared for you before the beginning of time. Because when I and his hands sweep across the crowd, when I was hungry, it was you. It was you who gave me food. And all God's people said together, amen. It is a privilege. Let's use this time for silent reflection. With the whole church, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
called and united by the power of God, the maker, sustainer, and Lord of all creation. We pray for the church, the nations, and those under the oppression of sin and the world. Jesus, our high priest, we pray for your church, your body and your hands in our world, the foretaste of your glory. Teach us your ways. Call up pastors, deacons, bishops, lay leaders, musicians, and teachers to share through the corpus of faith the beatific beauty and mercy of your sacrifice for us. Make our church a bastion for a lost and weary world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, it is of your providence. We pray for the world in its broken and sinful state. We pray for land scorched by fire and drowned by flood. We marvel at the gentle beauty of the leaves and the majestic crash at the boundary of sea and stone. We laugh with the joy at the dawning of the sun and dance with the rising of the stars. Creation quakes with unending praise to you, Lord God. May we be so blessed too. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful Messiah, the nations boil in rage and pain. War and the rumor of wars dominate our news and effuse throughout society. People united by nation are torn asunder by the manipulation of truth and politics as governments attempt to usurp the altar. Cast down the prideful. Raise up the humble leaders. Unite believers in every nation to stand for and serve your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Healing God, your people cry out in hurt and distress. Bring healing to the injured, justice to the wronged, peace to the anxious, and restoration to the lost. We remember before you today your children who are hungry and are in need of living bread. Send your saving care to those in need. We pray especially for Shannon, Bev, the Peck family, Susan, Betty, Kathy, Amy, and Michael. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equality and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Be with those we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Tanya. Judy, Barb, Randy, Bob. We pray for the work of aid organizations like Food for the Poor and give particular thanks for the presence and ministry of the Reverend Bob Berger. Be with him as he brings your redeeming word and your saving help to those in need. Accompany him on his travels home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. We remember our beloved dead, especially Marvin Stetler, who, with the great cloud of witnesses, bears witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in our pilgrimage of faith, that we too place our hope and trust in you. Hear us, O God. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace. Peace be with you, Judith. What did you do for him? Peace. Child of the 60s, I
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who honor and pain, that all may go your way and prepare for us now to peace on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, you created a world in which we all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and you fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. And so we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, shed in my blood, given for you and for many for the, sake, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us, and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your Spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want, and by this bread and cup, make us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, Jesus welcomes you to this table. Come, here is your God. Be God. is shed for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen.
as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with the dignity at your table. Send us now with, to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Follow Jesus. Thank you, God.